Come on. Four, three, two. Come on. Yes. Okay. Oh. Well, it's not a flawless system. We'll work on it. What is going on, guys? Unite the Clans here, back in yo life with another episode of Minecraft Building with Unite the Clans, and we are back here at Ho <clears throat> excuse me, at Hollow Grove, and uh, I am just doing a little bit of resource collection. I am loving that you guys are loving how much thought I'm putting into our new settlement here. This uh, new one that we're building, we're calling Hollow Grove, and uh, I have been spending a lot of time thinking about the people that live here and how they'd live, and what specifically they might eat. And uh, I am really just gonna take advantage of what naturally grows around here. Uh, obviously, lots of this sugar cane, and we've also got uh, pumpkins. And pumpkins tend to grow pretty often in this taiga. I don't know if this is the taiga, but whatever, this spruce forest biome. Uh, they tend to grow often, and I have gone ahead and planted a bunch of pumpkin seed vines and so we got them all over the place and now I really want to start doing something with them and my idea between the sugarcane and the pumpkins and the chickens that naturally spawn all over this forest is pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie sort of fits with the Minecraft lore. It's a food item from the game and it's one that I can imagine these folks uh, sort of eating. So I've gone and planted all this stuff around. We've now got a big supply of uh, pumpkins, as you can tell, we got a big supply of the reeds, the sugarcane, but what I don't have a big supply of is the eggs that these little bastards make, the chickens. And so today we are going to set out to make ourselves a little chicken coop, a, a wee chicken farm. And I should go get some sleep because it is getting late and it is getting dark. Hop down here, grab that one. I dropped one pumpkin. There you are. Perfect. And we're working on a design for a new chicken coop, and I'll show you that uh, once. Uh, I've dealt with this fool and slept the night because you're just gonna get in the way, aren't you? I'm trying to go to bed. Out of my way. Get slain. Okay, cool. Let's hop in bed here real quick. And I will show you sort of a prototype of the chicken coop I have in mind. Uh, I've worked on like a more rustic, less uh, thought out version, but if we... Yeah, we can do this. Okay, cool. I'm gonna throw some of these on my hotbar and I'll show you the like the super basic design that we've got in the works. And you uh, you can let me know what you think. I don't know, have you guys uh, ever really tried to streamline and organize your farming? I don't know if you have in Minecraft. So my first step is that chest. I'm gonna throw one of these, that's a hopper, on top. And then on top of that, I think what we want is, oops, crouch again, is that. And so then we'll build, I, I, honestly, we're going to have to do it inside one of our, our houses, inside Hollow Grove over here. One of these little uh, hobbit holes, I think that one right there. Um, but I'll show you the rough design. Put this here. Whoops. I probably should have. Yeah, let's put one there. All right. And something like that. And one of these across the top. And then we'll just have to fill in this back. Uh, which is going to be easy. We'll put one there, one there, and your extra. So this is like absolutely the simplest version, but what you've got here is a little spot for a chicken. And let's put one of these, whoops, one of these here. Whoops, fold you, fold you. Perfect. So you have this little spot where your chicken, his head's going to poke out the top, and you've got access to the chest down here where his eggs are going to collect, ideally. Now, I think I have a bunch of eggs in the inventory, and I'll show you how you would get because your first thought is, oh, that's a great idea, UTC. Brilliant. Make your own chicken coop. Keep the chickens captive. How the hell do you get a chicken to go in there? I'll tell you, you don't. You get a chick to do it, a baby chicken. Where are your eggs at? Oh, they're already in my inventory. So I really don't have that many. I really don't want to go wasting too many. We'll be able to collect a few once we get a chicken or two. But yeah, if a chicken doesn't spawn here, you'll get the idea. Okay, ready? So you do this like that. And then about every, I don't know what the odds are, but every fourth or fifth egg, instead of an egg breaking, you get a chicken. So you throw one in there, quickly close the door, boom. And you've got a captured little chicken. And you could probably, I don't know, I wonder if you could throw it up over the top. Maybe you could. 
Either way, we're gonna attempt to turn one of these rooms into a chicken coop. So I had a rough design that I, uh, I worked on in uh, away from camera. And then I really looked at it and I thought this version with the trap doors and the hoppers and the chest is probably better than my really rustic version where I'd have to go manually collect all the eggs. Uh, so I'll take you into the room that I have in mind. Now these people we have talked about, whoops, get out of my inventory vile zombie flesh so these people that we got here this wheat farm just for me while i'm building these guys will not be living off wheat they'll be living off pumpkins and uh, they live in this underground space now i'm thinking there will have to be some communal spaces because we have got in a little place over here i carved out another one over here just just the start so most of these people are going to live off the sides of uh these groves these little hobbit areas we're digging out and the central building i'm thinking is the one that we'll use uh for the chicken coop now this is my super rough design something like that and i was trying to keep the look i already had going in this room which is a lot of spruce and a lot of dirt and a lot of grass but i'm thinking that this method the eggs are either are going to stay in there and i might not be able to collect them through uh like i might not be able to collect them without opening the door and if I open the door I'm gonna lose my chickens so why don't we bust up these stupid acacia doors and we'll try and do a really simple version of what I just showed you uh, and we'll try and do it on the fly which I'm not good at building on the fly but we'll get we'll give it a damn we'll give it a damn attempt uh, I have got no stone showing in here so I'm just gonna bang out a little bit of this stone and replace it with dirt or uh, uh, yeah, or ideally a combo of dirt and spruce. Let's throw some dirt on the bar here. And I, today guys, I decided I was gonna talk a little bit about me. And I had chickens when I was a kid growing up. I don't know, I've probably never talked about that uh, on the channel before, but uh, yeah, we had chickens growing up. My dad, I think it was my dad's idea. I really can't remember, but um, it's one of those few little seemingly simple decisions my parents made when I was a kid growing up that uh, I would without a doubt take a moment or take some time to uh, to make that a part of my kid's life when I eventually have kids of my own. I think it's a really beneficial thing to do when you have kids to raise animals that aren't just pets. They aren't just uh, food or sorry, they aren't they aren't just your friends, but they're they're food because the truth is most kids are not vegetarian kids and they eat uh, plenty of meat. And it's a good thing, I think, in my mind for them to know where that meat comes from. And it's hard to figure that out as a kid to really avoid the, the, the mental disconnect that uh, we're going to need to craft. I need a crafting bench. Let's throw one down in here. It's hard to avoid that little mental disconnect that like your pets are... You know, in your head, you think your pets are very different than the ground beef that's in your dinner or the chicken breast that's in your dinner. Uh, and they are in how you feel about them. But if you're not raised around animals that are raised for food, then you don't really get to know what animals who are raised for food are like. And chickens are a really great way to start that in a family because uh, you don't have to slaughter them for meat. What you can do is go in there every day and collect the eggs and slowly start to feed your family with them. Uh, it's, um, uh, I think for kids, it's great because it adds a little routine. You have this daily chore that you otherwise might not have had. Uh, let's try out our first one, okay? Ready? Yeah, yeah, oh! Well, that's, that's exactly how you do it. You just gotta be faster. Let's see if I can do that, ready? Yes, I can. Come on, spawn a chicken. What are the odds? Get spawned. Get spawned. Come on. I had 16 of these. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on. I'm out of eggs, really? Okay, well, we'll make a chicken coop and we just won't occupy it with chickens yet. I'll have to go make sure I collect a lot more eggs or try and lure some of these stupid chickens who are around here into my coop. Damn it. I got one on the first try, and I didn't close the gate quick enough, and now he's gone and dead. Not dead. He will be dead eventually. I'll kill him for his meat. Um, 
so I want to, yeah, I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about what it was like uh, having chickens. I think um, our decision uh, didn't, you know, it didn't just inspire the kids and teach them what having pet chickens is all about. Our neighbors, actually my little sister's best friend's family growing up, saw what we did and went, that's brilliant. That is a great way to teach kids, you know, about like I said, where your food comes from, blah, blah, blah. And uh, and so they went, and they actually went a lot more serious than my family. My family, we did it for one summer. We had chickens. And uh, this family, my sister's best friend family, the Pukitases, they, uh, oh, that's not the right thing. They, uh, I think they did it summer after summer after summer, and they didn't just settle for chickens. I need more iron for do I have iron ore? I do have some iron ore in the inventory. So we'll get that cooking and uh, I'll I'll uh, collect what iron I do have. But yeah, they went uh, they went a lot more. They ended up with geese and ducks and um, my family like I said just did it for the one summer. So when the next summer rolled around and that family the Pukitas wanted to go on vacation, they thought we need someone to look after this giant multitude of animals we've got, right? Uh, they had a dog too, and they lived on a farm. It's like you can't really leave a farm totally unattended. It needs a little love and attention. And uh, and so they asked me, and it was really easy when I think back to convince me to uh, to do it for them because they had two cars and they were going on vacation and they took their minivan and their second car, hmm, what are they going to do with that? Well, I was a teenager just old enough to drive, but didn't have enough money to buy my own car yet. And so the lure of having a car and having access to someone else's house, whoops, uh, it's not how you make a hopper. Let's pick those up. I said pick those up, and we'll make a, a couple chests first. There we go. And uh, and so they, t honestly, there was a little bit of money involved. I don't really remember, but I know the main thing that they tempted me with was access to a car and access for a house for like a 17, 18-year-old who just desperately wanted some excitement in his life. Um, yeah, the, the cash was honestly, it was just a bit of a, it was a pittance. There was a little bit of money involved, but really it came down to, you want our car? Sure. Yeah, then take care of our chickens, ducks, and geese. So I did. Um, let's go uh, quickly. Wait, wait. I guess I got to make, sorry guys, it's hard to tell a story and to talk. I'm going to continue to work on this over the next little while because I have a lot of stories that I'd eventually like to share on this uh, channel and in this series. And it's going to take me a little time to slowly get through. Oh, is it nighttime already? Can I sleep? You can only sleep at night. It feels like nighttime. Um, Guys, why don't I set about making a couple more of these if I have enough iron? I'll at least do uh, two or three of them and we'll get to see how they look. Uh, and then I will come back with you. All right, guys, these are coming together. Uh, I left off in the middle of a story when I sent you guys to a uh, commercial. And so these guys, this family offered me access to their car to go uh, take care of their... Let's go collect some eggs because... Uh, I want to see if I can make this work. Uh, so we'll we'll see if we can't find a few eggs and get at least one chicken in this coop before the end of the episode. Um, so yeah, they had uh, asked me just to look after their house. There were a few other things involved, like they had an above ground pool and I would have to sort of vacuum the leaves out of that. They had a border collie, which needs a ton of exercise, so I'd basically go running with that dog. But the real job was look after the geese and the chickens, and that was a simple job too. You wake up in the morning, you collect the eggs, you feed them, you water them. Speaking of collecting eggs, let's see if we can't do a little of that ourselves. Uh, and then you leave them out in their little chicken coop yard for the day, and you go do what you got to do. I think for me, I I must have had another job at the time. I must have. Um, oh no, no, run! Yeah, we'll see you later, idiot. Whew. Whoa! All right. Oh god, there's freaks everywhere, aren't there? All right, chickens are what we're after. Yeah, so you go collect the eggs, you eat the eggs, and then you leave them out there once they've got enough food and water to entertain themselves for the day, picking away at the grass in this little yard that you've got for them. So I did that, I think day after day after day while these guys were on vacation, until I really got a routine to it and I got used to it and I felt comfortable doing it, knowing what I was doing. And um, one evening, uh, about an hour, maybe two hours before dusk, when I usually go over and make sure I got all the birds, the chickens, geese, and ducks inside their 
chicken coop for the night, uh, I went over and I looked and the little chicken yard that I was talking about where they spend their day was noticeably, noticeably more empty than the way it had been when I'd left it this morning. And I thought, Jesus, like, is it a coyote? Is it a fox? I didn't see any signs of blood or feathers anywhere, but there were definitely birds missing. And this family was on vacation. I mean, they'd left me a number where I could try and reach them. I think, maybe no, maybe they called me once a day from their hotel, wherever they were, just to check in. And I thought, man, what am I going to do? Where are they? Like, what happened to these birds? Did they just get over the fence and they're gone? How does that happen? Uh, and then I turn, decide to run up to the house, see if I can call my mom or my dad for a little advice. I don't see a damn chicken around Hollow Grove at all right now. I swear there were so many. Let's get ourselves some eggs if I can't. Uh, I got to finish telling this story, and I'd love to have some eggs in my inventory by the end of it. Uh, if I haven't found any, then I'll just go find some and bring you guys back and end the video by hopefully getting a few chickens into the, the coops there. Um, yeah, so I turn around to run panicked back to this house. The dog's just on the other side of the door. He's freaking out because he thinks it's time for his walk. And I'm going, no chance, man. I got to find this poultry. As I'm walking back to the house, I look up. And on the ridge line, like on the roof line of the house, are the two missing uh, geese and a couple of ducks. Uh, some of the ducks, I guess, hadn't figured this out yet. But they had gotten up and f flown away basically. And I was, I was flabbergasted. I had a WTF face because these birds had just stayed in this little like yard with like a two and a half foot high chicken wire fence. And they'd done that for like a week while I was looking after them. And then I get there this one day and all of a sudden, I guess they could fly. Uh, damn chickens, where the hell you at? Uh, yeah, I guess these, these birds learn to fly, and that's something I learned and that the Paquitas family, they learned after a little while because um, what happens is as the you know ducks and geese, which aren't flightless farm birds, they're farm birds that naturally can fly if they don't get too fat, uh, you have to trim the feathers on their wings. It's called clipping their wings, which makes it sound like you might be doing some permanent damage. It's so simple. It's like you, uh, you really just trim the tip of one feather on one wing and it makes it impossible for them to stay balanced in the air. And that's really all it is. And so uh, I, have yeah, I go there and I, I had never heard of this. I mean, I'd heard of it, but I'd not thought of it or thought that the time these birds learn and decide to fly is gonna be with me. I figured it would happen, it, nothing crazy would happen while I was looking after them because I'd looked after them before and nothing crazy had happened. Um, and yeah, I got there this one day and those things are up on the ridge, up on the roof line. Um, I eventually got them down, I think with food. I really can't remember. I think I just put food out and they came down. And then we ended up having to go ahead and clip their wings on our own to, with the family away just so we could figure it out. I think I had my, I can't, honestly, I can't remember. But yeah, it, it's, when I think about it, it's a bit of a, a good metaphor for life. Like you, you really can't get comfortable. I know people look ahead and they look ahead to, you know, weeks and months in the future and they go, oh, I'll just buy a house and I'll be happy. Like, maybe, yeah, maybe I should work really hard. I'll save up some money. I'll buy a house and then I'll be happy. There is no finish line. Like life is a constant steady struggle to have a better day than you had the day before. And I've figured that out over the last few years. I am 32 now. I'm not a young man. and Or maybe I am, depending on your perspective. But um, I haven't found a damn chicken this whole time. I've just been walking and talking. We'll, we'll head back. But yeah, I, I, um, I think that that's a good sort of metaphor. You cannot get too comfortable. You cannot think, I've got this thing on lock. I know what I'm doing. Because life will always manage to throw you a curveball and it'll always manage to surprise you. And all you can do is really wake up and think, I'll just have a better day than I had yesterday. I'm more productive, I'm more inspired, I'm more creative. Whatever the thing is that you're attempting to do with your life, uh, you have to take it a day at the time. You can't look at it and go, well, yeah, I'm done. This is good, we're, we're at Utopia, we're at the finish line. That just never happens. And I had kind of gotten complacent when it came to this these birds and I came home one day to just find poultry on the roof of the house I'm supposed to be house sitting and uh yeah I just want to share that little one with you guys give me a minute why don't I see if I can't go rustle up some eggs it might take me a little while but once I've got another stack of eggs I think I'll probably need a full stack I will come back and I'll hopefully show you this chicken coop in action 
All right, guys, I have got 16 eggs. I think I can afford to use one of them to make myself a pumpkin pie, which is gonna be the, the food staple of choice for these people. And I think it's one egg, one sugar, one pumpkin. Is that right? That might be right. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. And we'll just throw you by the wayside. Uh, check it out. This is pumpkin pie. And this is what these people are gonna be eating in droves. Now, Obviously, like I said, we've got the the sugarcane already growing all around the uh, the ocean. We've got pumpkins growing all above Hollow Grove here, and inside Hollow Grove, we're gonna have some chickens. I only ended up making a couple of these, and there you go, 15 eggs. I'm gonna leave that. We'll hop up here, and we'll see if we can't get a chicken to land in our coop. Ready? Nope. 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 Yes. Come on. Four, three, two, come on. Yes, okay, oh. Well, it's not a flawless system. We'll work on it, you little bastard. Okay, cool. Geeks, thank you. What? All right, this whole chicken coop idea needs some work. Either way, it's the end of a damn episode. Geeks, thank you so much for checking out this episode of Building with UTC. We're out here at Hollow Grove my new settlement, and we will be back here in the next episode. Equip saddle. Let's throw this saddle on there. And by the way, I go shirtless whenever possible. Just looking particularly boss out here. Looking ripped. And when you're riding a parasaur, nothing better than doing it bare-chested with a cowboy hat. <laughs> in leather pants. I don't know what kind of a character I've got going on, but he's real badass.